Hello and welcome friends, welcome to another episode where I review vintage fountain pens. Today it is a special day because I've changed my camera and maybe you know if you follow my channel. Till uh, now I use the camera of my smartphone Samsung Galaxy Note 8 and now I upgraded my phone and I use the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. So you will see nicer videos and I hope that uh, the, the zoom, the digital zoom of uh, 50X will uh, do magic to see some details of our vintage, vintage and new fountain pens that I review on this channel. Today I have for you a beautiful, beautiful celluloid fountain pen and this time let me see if I can use the zoom. I have a lesser known brand and yes, I will use the zoom for you to see. So I have a Otolo fountain pen, Otolo Extra. I'm not familiar with this brand name and I thought to myself maybe it is an Italian product, but under Otolo we can see Brevete and uh, the accent on E at the end of Brevete tells us that this is a product of the French market. Unfortunately, I don't know many information about Otolo and uh, I've asked on a few forums but uh, and including the Fountain Pen Network not, not much more information about this brand. If you have information about this brand, please uh, write in the comments. Well, guys, this is a beautiful celluloid, as you can see. It is a piston filler and it has the rotating piston right over here. Unfortunately, it is not working. So when you unscrew the cap, we can see the beautiful, beautiful ink window, the transparent ink window. And this, by rotating this part, it should do the trick and um, advance the piston. We definitely can see that the wooden cork needs to be replaced. It has some imperfections, so glue marks here. But it has a beautiful, beautiful gold nib. A warranted gold nib, 14 karat, Osmi Point. Osmi Point refers to the material, the resisting material at the top of the nib, which was made by a material called Osmium. At the back we have a simple ebonite feed in quite a nice looking form. And as a detail, we have a four on the grip section, thermically engraved. Also, if we look at the end of the grip section, we have Otolo and again Brevete. What can I say, guys, about this fountain pen? I presume it's from the 1930s or maybe early 1940s and Again, it is French. It is fitted with a warranted nib that is a generic nib made in UK, United Kingdom, or maybe in America. But judging by the way that we have 14 carat with a C and not a K, I think it was made in the uh, UK and intended for the European market. As a matter of fact, guys, I have a fountain pen that is similar to this fountain pen. Let me put this here. And yes, if I'm not mistaken, it's right over here. 
so I'm sorry guys I will take it like this I believe this fountain pen it is a Stadler Luna I'm not so sure let me check out uh, let me check it out with you yes yes so we have a GA Stadler Luna it is um, in almost the same material and yes let me show them to you both of them so practically if we look closely we can see almost the same the same design let me zoom on them yes definitely the same type of celluloid different endings but i believe they are both made from um, hard rubber which uh, developed this patina in time the clips they seem the same we have two rings metallic rings this time the Stedler developed this patina on the celluloid we can see that this is hard rubber definitely hard rubber because it has this patina of a uh, brown patina and in comparison this I think it might be celluloid but because it didn't develop that patina if I unscrew the cap of the Stedler we see the ink window this time a darker ink window and in comparison we can see the original Mars nib made in Germany as you can see and I'm curious to see the ebonite feed yes the ebonite feed is quite quite different so nice to see two examples one from Germany and the other from the French market they are quite quite nice fountain pens and I hope I don't know this is the cap of the Stadler Luna it unscrews like this and this is our fountain pen so guys quite quite nice looking fountain pens both made out of celluloid I will leave the dimensions of the Otolo fountain pen on the screen and after that we will do the writing sample bear in mind guys that I will simply dip the pen in um, ink and we will do the writing sample with it as it is it is a beautiful beautiful fountain pen I'm trying to focus I'm sorry I'm learning how to use this camera it is quite strange to me but um, I hope that um, in time I will get used to it so I'm trying to focus and I can't I will simply do this thing and yes now it focuses I'm sorry I'm just learning myself to use this uh, camera we can see on the cap the one breathing hole two breathing holes and uh, what I like about this model is the fact that it uh, maintained uh, the original color of the celluloid maybe this we have a little discoloration over here but in comparison with the Stadler fountain pen which by the way had the same type of celluloid you can see how beautiful the barrel remains on the Otolo fountain pen so like I said let me put them aside and now I think I have a yes I have here a Herlitz notepad and we will do the writing sample on this let me see if it's necessary for me to change the angle of the camera so yes i believe i will change the angle of the camera okay guys for the writing sample i will use the parker quick ink royal blue ink let me open it i will give it a little nice shake i will open it okay i will place it right over here next I will prepare a little tissue now we will open this beautiful beautiful fountain pen and again guys I can't 
get the ink in the reservoir that's why i will simply dip this beautiful beautiful warranted nib in the ink and i hope that everything it will be all right and i can write with it so i will simply remove the excess of the ink from the grip section i will leave this here on the nib guys remember after you use the ink bottle just put back the cap on i won't put back on the cap because i want to see if our otolo fountain pen writes or it needs a little bit of dipping let me see you can see the cap posts and this is what i was afraid you can see here guys a little crack and i don't know if i just done it but i presume it was there for some time that's why I don't cap my fountain pens. So when I place it like this, it was designed beautifully to cover all this black part. But look, it did this damage. You might want to be careful with your celluloid fountain pens because they were all designed to have this thick and this will be thicker. The ending are quite fragile in the celluloids of the 1930s and the 1940s so guys this is one of the reasons that i don't post my vintage fountain pens let me put the cap here by the way guys i don't know if it can be fixed but i will try to use it with more more care so let me try to give you a little bit of zoom not too much but not too and now i will see so this is the otolo extra fountain pen uh, what can I say? A little, little bit flex, flex nib. Uh, and by the way, let me see if I can show you. So, you can see those tines, they move apart from each other. It uh, gives a little, little bit of nice feeling. I'm not so sure that uh, you've, uh, you can tell the difference. So, again, Otolo extra i believe this is a celluloid Ce okay so this is the reason that i need the ink sorry okay oops yes so this is a celluloid celluloid it is a piston piston filler I presume it's from the 1930s or early 1940s and I presume it was made in France because on the barrel we have the the inscription brevete with an accent on the e okay guys let me put the ink bottle here and let me show you how juicy this nib is well quite quite a juicy nib the line variation i'm not so sure if you can see it yes it's no visible so i can't tell you it's a flexi nib so no flex but we definitely have a line variation and let me show you t uh, let me show you so this is no pressure and this is a little bit of pressure and um, you can't tell the difference so i can't say we have a line variation so no line variation 
This nib has a strange feeling, guys. It's the same feeling that uh, the nibs, the gold nibs from the German fountain pens of the 1950s have. That flexy feeling to it. And in writing, it gives you the um, sensation that you can do uh, thicker lines or thick lines. It's quite interesting. I can feel the line variations. So even though we don't see it, it has that little, little flex to it. I'm not so sure how to describe it. Okay, guys, let me see if the reverse writing is possible. So reverse writing well i'm not so sure because one of the fact it scratches and the other fact it loses the ink flow so no reverse writing okay let me dip it again in ink to be sure that it will write okay let me now try to do a little signature with it so review hmm. quite nice it is it is a beautiful beautiful nib you must know that the vintage warranty nibs are quite quite good nibs and even though you don't have the original nib on your fountain pen if it was replaced with a warranted nib you can rest assured that it is a good good nib and also a gold nib so better a warranted nib than a cheap steel nib in my opinion guys i've shown you most of uh, the features of the nib let me now tell you about the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog so i'm sorry guys about my handwriting i hope um, it is uh, quite uh, lisible for you so this is the way this nib operates i want to be sincere with you guys i don't like the fact that this feels so flexible in uh, the hand because I need to write as stiff as I can. I, I'm not so sure how to explain this. So it gives the feeling of, look, look at it, look at it, uh, just trembling. I need a stiff nib. I don't need flexiness or a sensation of flexiness. Don't get me wrong, guys. Maybe it's just my handwriting and I'm not used to this kind of nib. And believe me, I stand by my words, the warranted nibs are good quality vintage gold nibs. But this has a strange feeling in the hand. Guys, this was my review of this wonderful, wonderful celluloid. I hope you've uh, enjoyed it. I uh, want to wish you to have a nice day. A nice day wherever you are. Thank you guys for the, your time. And for those of you who are new, I hope you've enjoyed the review of this beautiful, beautiful celluloid from the 1930s. The only problem that uh, is that this fountain pen needs a restoration. First of all, this crack that you saw here on the cap of course the piston filling mechanism needs a little bit of attention and a new wooden cork i think it will do the trick and maybe some solvent or something that can remove this i think residues of glue or something like that someone tried to repair this fountain pen at some point it is what it is Remember guys, if you have information about the French Otolo brand, please leave them in the comments. Maybe you have your own Otolo fountain pens. I thank you again for your time. We will see each other at the next episode. Till then, please subscribe to my channel to support my activity. 
and also take care of yourself in this pandemic time. Thank you guys, bye bye and God bless.